Hi guys, Brian Scary Lion back with another video and back with another installment of Lion Reviews. Today we are going to be reviewing Umbrella Academy, a show on Netflix that, well, I do actually love. Before we get into what I actually think of it, let's talk about some of the people behind it and the actual plot. So the show itself is based on a comic written by Gerard Way, who you may know as the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. There's quite a lot of people who star in this, so some of the names that we've got in this are Ellen Page, Tom Hopper, David Castaneda, Emmy Raver Lampman, Robert Sheehan, Aidan Gallagher, and Justin H. Min. The basic plot of the show is, October 1989, 43 infants were born to women who showed no signs of pregnancy prior to giving birth. So Reginald Hargreaves, a billionaire industrialist, adopts seven of the children and trains them to become superheroes based on their individual powers. After the father's death years later, the six surviving, that's one of the things that the show gets into, but the six surviving members of the team come back together to try to work out what happened to their dad, the mystery surrounding his death, and stop an impending apocalypse. Now straight after the bat, I want to say that I absolutely love this show. But it wasn't the case from the beginning. I feel like this show was really slow to get started. And even some of the other aspects of the show. Uh, things like basing around character development and character backstories. It feels a little slow. But it doesn't take away from the actual story itself. Everything in it, it is great. I feel like casting went really well on this show. Some aspects I probably would have put other actors in. Um, especially for the actor playing number one, like, don't get me wrong, he's good, but I feel like there are people who could have portrayed the character a lot better. I'll take nothing away from him, he's doing, uh, he's doing a good job, there's just people who could do it better. Ellen Page's character in this, it felt hard to get into her character throughout the start of it, like, her, her character was basically just there, and I don't know if that's what was intended, because after the progression of her character, she felt really good and felt like this role was perfect for her. But, I it took a while to get to that point. At first I was thinking, is Ellen Page actually right for this role? So maybe it was intended for it to go that way. For it to go the way of, alright, let's not let people get too invested. And then bam, we'll just let everybody get invested. It worked. It worked if that's what you were going for. As with most things... One of the big things that I look for in a TV show or a film or whatever is the balance of the music. The the music that they were playing during the fight scenes and things, I, I, I thought was perfect. It was music that belonged nowhere near a fight scene for, for the most part, which gave it that little... I don't know, you felt really happy watching a fight scene. I think that's the best way I could say it. You felt really jolly while watching a fight scene, not even thinking that what you're watching in front of you is somebody getting the shit kicked out of them. I feel like the character that I could relate to most in this was David Castenda's character Diego. You could tell he was a very emotional character, but he tried to conceal those emotions by just pushing forward with the job or pushing other people out of his life. And I don't know, for me that was kind of relatable. I feel like in this there is probably a character that everybody could relate to. Because all of the characters, while being family, they were all different. Some of the stories within it, if put in a different place, would have felt wrong. But I felt like they had the right placement in this. And it built a lot of emotional response. Some of the scenes could have went over the top with the emotion. But I feel like the way that they actually put, put everything across, it actually pulled across how you were meant to feel at this at this stage or whatever. Now, I've not read the comics, I think I will actually need to read the comics, so I can't do a basis of how it compares comic to TV show. I will probably come back to that at some point in the future, just let you guys know what I think of basing them against each other, but at the moment I can't really do that. Now, with that being said, I am big on my comics, like, I love reading comics, uh, and I'd heard nothing of this, like, I, I knew nothing of this one comic. But after watching the TV show, it does make me want to go and actually pick them up and go through them. So I feel like that's one aspect that is really worked out. Because sometimes you can try to pull that off, 
but nobody's really going to give a shit about the book, about the comic, about whatever else it is, because they're just too invested in the series. I feel like it's nice to have that balance of, right, I want to check out Beth. Another good thing that they did here is they have the whole shot of the future after the apocalypse with normal time running, but they don't overdo it. So many shows actually have this whole impending apocalypse will show this much of what's actually going to be happening afterwards. And you're like, well, we just want, we know what's going to happen afterwards. There's not much more you can show us about it. Just actually get along with them trying to avoid it. That's, that's what we want to see. That's the big part of it all. This had a nice little balance between actually showing us what is going to happen and only going to the future when it needed to. Only showing us little shots of what we absolutely had to see. While coupling it with the fact that the timeline has gone ahead as normal with them trying to figure out what to do. Like I was saying with the whole got moving along a bit slow thing, I feel like there was a lot that should have been explained in this season before moving on to season 2 but they've kept it for season two. I don't really know why. Little spoiler alert coming up. So I'll put another time on the screen so you can actually jump ahead if you don't want it. Like one of the things I w would really like to know is why is number one, number one? Like, cause if we're basing it off of powers, let's be honest, Ben probably had the best power. Cause let's be honest, out of all of them, number six probably had the best of the powers. We only got to see a short little bit of it, but that power is incredible and I feel like if not for the white violin, this would be the most destructive. But he wanted to keep Vanya's powers hidden, didn't he? So, but that comes on a little bit more in the series, hence why I've put a spoiler alert on. But it, it, it's one of them, why is number one the leader? Another one of them is power development. I think we got to see a little bit of the power development, mainly Mainly with number four, Klaus, we got to see a little bit of his power development, but only towards the end. So, I would like to know a little bit more about the powers, maybe about what they really do, and why some of them don't cho choose to use them, and why some of them do. Things like that, I would like a little bit more of that. Like, I really think that's my main gripe with the show, the fact that a lot of it is just too slow for me. But like I say, it's a really good show. Uh, I, I, I fully encourage anybody who's thinking about watching it to actually go and watch it. Because it is brilliant and we didn't know that it's been picked up for a season two. So they will be moving ahead with that. Hopefully they move a little bit quicker in this. I don't want to see them obviously go and fucking shoot off and start telling a million different things that they don't have to tell. Uh, but I would like a little bit of speed up on it. So the rating of this, I am going to gear a uh, let's see where it goes. Honestly, I absolutely love it, but I do need it to speed up or else I probably will lose interest. The fact of the matter is, even my brother, my brother was watching it and a few episodes in, he'd given up. He said that he didn't really enjoy it. I, I encouraged him to watch it a little bit more. He watched it to the end and he says his main problem was exactly the same as me. It was a bit too slow to actually get into everything. But there you go. There's my review of the Umbrella Academy. Hope I was able to get everything across the way that I wanted it to. Uh, sometimes I can get a bit jumbled in my own words and put points across that I don't really know what I'm talking about. But I hopefully I was able to get this across well. So as that white violin plays off the second instalment of Lion Reviews, I hope you will all remember to tune in next week. And also, don't forget to buttfuck that like button.